I hereby introduce to you, Mr. Michael Veazey. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Amazing FBA and its sister um, video podcast, the British Amazon seller. So I'm delighted to welcome back today our very, very first guest back in the dark ages of the show in November 2015, um, who came on because he just started selling on Amazon. And uh, I pretty much just started the podcast then as well. And one of the first people to actually get in touch and meet up with me in person at an event, I was very impressed that I'd actually reached yeah, one person at that point. And David has now been selling on Amazon for ages. And um, we've invited him back to tell us more about his journey since that time. And uh, so it's a great pleasure to welcome you back, David. Hi, right, thanks so much for having me. It um, seems ages ago, I was last on November 15. Um, at the same time last year, it's just gone so quick. So it's, uh, yeah, it's great to, great to speak to you again and have a catch up. Great. Well, so David, uh, for those of us who didn't catch you, give us a bit of ba- background uh, about yourself and how you came to be selling on Amazon, first of all. So before the Amazon days, um, I was, uh, I guess, a regular employee bouncing around from job to job. Um, I kind of fell into property investing four or five years ago. So it kind of opened my mind up to, to sort of other avenues of working, other streams of income. Um, so for three, four years before I was selling on Amazon, I, I was working in buy set property and building a portfolio. Always thought there's room to do something online. Um, went along to some training for Amazon back in what, probably early April 15, actually. Um, so I took a training course, learned about the Amazon FBA system and, and private labeling, launched probably September time, 15, spoke to you in November. Um, And then going through last year, really, a a few other changes in life. Um, Got myself in a position where I could give up the day job. Um, So I I quit my job early last year uh, and and run a, well, I work self-employed now as a mortgage broker alongside investing in property and uh, and running my Amazon business. Wow. So that's really quite a massive uh, life changes that you've gone through since you, um, did the interview last with me so um so when did you say you started your amazon training it was in 2015 sort of august or something like that uh, did you say? april may time for the training april. okay and, uh, i went live got first product selling at the beginning of september okay so quite reasonably quick so may so june july august september so four months yeah, from four months the training to getting going right well done i mean i have to say it took me about eight which was kind of a record for being too slow i think it's partly because i moved city and and god knows what but also yeah (laughs) i did it all the wrong way so which is one of the reasons why i did the podcast because i thought other people out there presumably are going to be as dumb as i was and need some rescuing from themselves as well so obviously you did a lot better job than i did so yeah quite a transformation so david tell us a little bit more about your journey since um, about the sort of August, whatever, um, September 2015 time. Um, what what have you done since then? What's happened with your Amazon business? So I kind of got off to a flyer, really, with Amazon, as, as we talked about last time. Um, launched the one product in, in September 15. Um, I think I, I did really catch the timing very well because we were just going into quarter four. At the time, we had incentivized reviews. So that was by launch platform. Um, probably gave away 150, 200 units in exchange for reviews. Um, picked up on the quarter four traffic. And then throughout last year, that, that product flew. It kind of exceeded all my expectations, really. Um, with the other things going on, I was probably a bit slow to expand, but I did get another product launched uh, around November last year, October, November 16. Um, that was right about the time that we lost incentivized, incentivized reviews. So that really took my attention through quarter four was obviously increased traffic but just trying to make my product more visible uh, and try and get that one launched as well so yeah i mean last year exceeded my expectations i was when i started i was happy for for 10 products sold a day um but just sort of from, from two products 30 plus a day really so it, it, it flew last year nice so you went you had 30 products a day selling was that throughout sort of the year or did it change over the course of the year did you find yeah I mean, there's a single product throughout the year for most of the year i was probably around 20 20 units a day as i launched the second product just before quarter four um that was heading up towards the 30. i mean i don't know how you found uh november december last year but it, it absolutely took off probably in the region of 50 to 70 units a day uh from just two products 
Yeah, I had a very similar experience, actually. In fact, I remember on Cyber Monday looking at my um, Amazon stats and finding that I'd sold 103 of just one of my SKUs. So, uh, yeah, I do find that there's a huge difference between quarter four and the rest. I mean, that same SKU in January was doing about four or five a day. It's now doing about 10 a day in, in February uh, 2017. So, yeah, there's a big seasonal variation. Sounds like your products are slightly more solid throughout the year, though. It, it was better than I thought, yeah. Um, I'd say 10 was my, my benchmark, so to double that was was great. Amazing. So tell us about your basic process. How did you get started picking your products? <laughs> Browsing Amazon, really. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. On, the, on obviously the training, they, they teach you about, you know, methods of, uh, of, of sourcing products, picking markets, picking niches. I, I kind of loosely stuck to that, but I didn't go for sort of the real top um, – high competition products I kind of wanted to, to float a little bit under the radar so I just I really browsed Amazon looked at things within um, the smaller light and, and the price category of 15 to 50 dollars um, then cross-checked that with things like Google Trends uh, Merchant Words just to gauge demand looked at the other listings and, and kind of stumbled into my niche that way really just from clicking from one product to the next Okay, so you didn't use a research tool like um, any of the, the Jungle Scout web app or anything along those lines to try that, and sort of find a niche? That wasn't available, I don't think, when I first started, actually. I've, I've used the web app now to gauge demand for my related products, um, which is very helpful. Um, but to be honest, I, when, I, when I launched, I had an idea of what the first five or six were going to be, and that's still still the idea of what the next few products are going to be as well. So that hasn't really changed. The demand is, is still there, even double-checking it now with the web tools. It's, uh, it hasn't really changed a great deal. Okay. So you started off, you ended up with a, a sort of short list of five that you are working your way through launching. Is that the idea? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, exactly right. Excellent. So um, did you have any other sort of ways of finding it? Because obviously browsing around Amazon, you had sort of 15 to $50 selling price as a criterion. But um, any other sort of words of wisdom from your experience uh, I think I, I ended up looking at things that I could relate to really as, as, a, as a consumer or for my personal interest really so there, there was kind of a bit of um, bit of personal feeling to it as well so I could relate to those products uh, and then did my research off the back of that so rather than just looking in all categories from baby to automotive to home and kitchen I probably looked at some of the more specific niches that I had an interest in Okay. Now, uh, so you looked at the demand side of things, and uh, did you use any particular tools for that? Yeah, Google Trends. Google Trends, okay. And, um, did you... and, and Merchant oh. Words as well. Merchant Words, okay. So that was the, the main tools you used for that. And what about the reviews side of things? Um, did you worry about reviews, and if, do you have a sort of particular criteria that you followed? At the time, I wasn't too concerned about the reviews. I mean, I didn't want to go into an area where, where your page one was dominated with people with thousands and thousands. You know, a few hundred and the odd few with, with a few thousands wasn't a problem. Um, I kind of felt if I could get a couple of hundred reviews, um, I could compete. Obviously, very different now. Um, maybe you need to pay a little bit of a, a closer eye to, to your competition in terms of reviews because it's, it is that much harder to get those initial reviews. Hmm. So when you're choosing a product now, is that something you're more wary of? It is, because actually the second product, I picked it and launched it or, or started the launch process before the Incentivize Review ban came out. So I went into an area where there were probably, in hindsight now, a few too many people with a few too many reviews. So it has been a slightly tougher ride to get that one going. Still in the process of that, you know, I'm working out... Um, balancing off sort of a bit of an overspend on pay-per-click to, to make it visible. I'm actually now looking at a few bits sort of off Amazon to try and generate a bit of uh, a bit of traffic off Amazon as well. Great. Okay. Well, yeah, you're bringing us on to launch strategy, which is the, ne which is the next obvious uh, question. So especially post-incentivized reviews, do you have a particular strategy or do you have a, a sort of basic um, principles that you follow? Uh, initially, I'll probably overspend on, on pay-per-click. So at the moment, it's just Amazon pay-per-click. I think probably many others are doing that. So I'm starting to look at things like Facebook ads um, and Google and Bing just to try and bring some traffic in from elsewhere. Haven't launched those categories, those campaigns yet. So at the moment, it is still just, just uh, Amazon advertising. But overspend a little bit to begin with um, just to make it visible. I'll also take up Amazon's offers of lightning deals whenever they're possible as well. So I've just recently had two lightning deals for, for each of my products which has given it a little bit of a boost. 
I'll be keeping my eye out on that for future offerings as well. Yeah. So tell us about um, lightning deals. Do you um, get invited by Amazon? Can you apply for them? How does that work? I haven't seen any way of applying. <laughs> There's a tab underneath your, um, underneath your advertising uh, tab on the main screen of, of Seller Central um, for lightning deals. <clears throat> I think they update it once a week, but they will offer a lightning deal when they feel it's relevant or when they need something in a particular category. They'll, um, they'll offer you a lightning deal. Okay. And how does the lightning deal work for you as a seller? Generally very good. Um, the last one I did, however, was um, but because they allocate your time slot. So I got allocated 1 a.m. to 7 a.m., which probably wasn't the most productive of time slots to be in. So I didn't actually sell through the full amount of product I've allocated, but I picked up another 40 or so sales from that lightning deal, which was a nice boost. I was going to say 40 sales between 1 a.m. and 7 a.m. sounds yeah. not bad a result. So how does that actually what? So talk us through that process then if you get offered the lightning. So it sounds like something Amazon may offer if you've got reasonable sales already and um, they allocate you a time slot. And then what do you do? Allocate a certain amount of inventory to that. And do you set the price? How does that work? So they'll set the parameters. Once you've got a deal available um, and you click into the tab, they'll they'll set the parameters. They'll tell you minimum number of units. Um, they'll give you a minimum price, which is based on your average sales price history. For, I think it's 90 days. Um, so it depends on what you have been selling at as to how much of a discount they want you to give. You've also got um, a number of time slots. I say you can pick a time slot. You can pick a very broad time slot. So you can pick one week or another week. When it gets closer to that week you've chosen, they'll actually allocate you a day and a time. Uh, you can't do anything about that but you can cancel the lightning deal and try and opt in again if you've got another one available to try and pick a more favourable time. I think that's probably what I would do next time around. Um, if I get the, the graveyard shift in the middle of the night again, I'll probably cancel it and, and try and select another time slot. Okay, interesting. Okay, so that's something that may come up for some people, but it's not a sort of general strategy. So um, do you have any other sort of general strategies that you use for launch at the moment then? It's just the, the pay-per-click spend. You're looking into the other um ways of doing things uh like facebook ads and google ads and so forth but um anything else what do you do about price price <clears throat> there's a number of things you can do with price <laughs> um i mean uh, i i've kind of gone in slightly lower about five dollars lower than my target price just to keep the price low um it still makes a profit um but it's it's a slightly lower price so that that could be more appealing a number of people i know have often dropped it down to a break-even price just to try and gain some traction yeah. As well, to be fair, I, I don't know how much difference there is from a slightly reduced price to a to a break even price. I guess my worry is if you appear too cheap, that can sometimes put people off as well. Yeah, I guess that can be true. Although Amazon is one of the biggest price comparison sites in my experience, but yeah, it, it could negatively affect things. So tell us about your margins and what sort of things you aim for. Because obviously, if you can sell it five dollars below your target price and still make it profitable, that implies that you're, um, you know, you've got quite a decent margin built in there. So what is the, what sort of profit margin you look at as a rule of thumb or do you multiply the landed cost? What's your sort of rules of thumb there? So yeah, when I'm, when I'm piecing it all together, I guess really my target price, I want to be running at um, about 25% profit. Um, figures for last year from, from the full year, I ran at 20%. So sort of year end figures was a 20% profit, which I was very happy with. Yeah, I mean, 20% if you're selling 30, 40 units a day um, can add up pretty quickly. So that Absolutely. seems pretty good to me. Yeah, excellent. Okay. Um, so then what is your, um, what's your plan for the future? So you've got two SKUs up now. It sounds like they're working really nicely for you. So SKUs being product lines for those who are not into the Amazon jargon. Um, but what, what is next for you? Are you going to try and do things in the same category? Are you going to go into completely different categories? Are you worried about categories? You just kind of grab any product that looks like it's going to sell? Well, I've, I've still got another three or four related products. Um, so the next thing really, I'm, I'm going to start getting some more samples through for those, negotiate on price and just try and launch another couple of products. Um, I think for me really, rather than focusing in on, on getting the last product right up to the very top of its category. I, I want to sort of switch and, and go down a numbers route, get, get another couple of products launched. Naturally, some will rise to the top and some will drop off. And then obviously just, just focus my attentions on which ones need the attention from there. Excellent. So uh, you're not going to get too married to one particular SKU. You're just going to get those out there and see what takes off. Absolutely. Makes a lot of sense.
but from there then yeah i mean that that will be this particular small niche covered with the products that i want so i'll expand into the wider category i think 